under the merciless rays of the pitiless Arabian sun, those of us who are privileged to be here are waiting with tense excitement. The great moment has come, the moment which will prove to the world whether the astounding theory of these intrepid adventures is right or whether they have been following a fleeting will of the wisp As I look down into the cavernous depths of the excavation, I can see the chief actors in this epic-making drama of history. First, as he should be, the young and brilliant archaeologist Howard Stevens of the San Francisco Museum. Words cannot describe the feverish tensity of this moment. Surrounded by learned men from the far corners of the earth, Mr. Stevens is expertly brushing the dust of untold centuries from an object of tremendous antiquity. We'll soon know. The bronze young leader of the expedition is handing his find over to Professor Heinrich von Kleinroth of Vienna, who, like many of the savants, recently hurried to this faraway waste to lend his knowledge and experience. Wahrhaftig. Wahrhaftig, this can't zweifel. You are right, my friend. This emblem is the Lion of Judea, Seal of Salomon. Are you certain? This contradicts all my former research. Oh, your research. Gentlemen, there is no doubt in my mind. I'm holding in my hand the crown of Balkis. Queen of Sheba. Think of it, ladies and gentlemen. After 3,000 years, uncovered before my very eyes, the fabulous crown of the Queen of Sheba. My friend, you have unearthed a symbol priceless to seekers after knowledge like ourselves. But keep in mind the immense worldly value of these jewels. Guard them as you would your life. Don't you worry about it, Professor. Until we get it aboard ship, Prince Sulate and his men will look after it. After that, it's my responsibility. Surely no modern collection boasts such jewels as these. Even the emeralds of His Highness, the Aga Khan, cannot compare with them. Hilala. Uh, the journalists are still waiting, Mr. Stephen. Shall I send them away? Uh, no, I'll see them, but not in here. I won't be long. Responsibility lies more heavily for Mr. Stevens than he cares to admit. Uneasy lies the hand that bears a crown? He would be less uneasy if he knew that you were here to guard it, Mr. Moto. You see, I was in Cairo when news came of Mr. Stevens' discovery of this ancient site. My sudden visit here was in the nature of a gamble, which has been justified by the finding of this crown. Still, you leave me in the dark, Mr. Moto. I cherish the hope that this priceless and exotic treasure will lead me to a certain genius in a world of crime. You believe a criminal is here, in this expedition? I hardly expect him to be so obvious or so clairvoyant, but sooner or later he will come to wherever this crown may be. It appears to me that you're still gambling, Mr. Moto. Jewels such as these are certain to attract many thieves, but it doesn't follow that your man will be among them. You are in error, Prince. Uh, this certain man will be compelled to make an attempt. Compelled? Yes, by his own mind. He's psychopathic, a uh, kleptomaniac upon a grand scale. The more unattainable the object, the more determined he grows to possess it. You may remember the daring theft of certain jewels some time ago from the Tower of London. But that was the work of, uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, Metaxa. Oh, but he's been dead several years. I do not think so. There have been several unsolved cases in the past few years which, to my humble mind, bear unmistakable signs of Metaxas' handiwork. So now Professor von Kleinroth accompanies the crown of Sheba wherever it goes. Oh, no. With your assistance, the professor returns to Vienna, most inconspicuously. But uh, aboard the ship, which carries the crown to America, will be a Japanese tourist, a uh, Mr. Shimako. Uh, Mr. Shimako, I might add is uh, clean-shaven. Hello! Well, next stop, San Francisco. I suppose you're all excited, Howard. Oh, I don't know. Yes, of course I am. It'll be wonderful for you, won't it? Like, like Caesar or somebody returning home in triumph. Now I'll pick up where I left off. Tea parties, cocktail parties, dinner parties, all really pretty and very dull. You know you like it, really. I could, perhaps, in the right company. I don't know you've got salt water in your eyes. In short going glasses, everything's going to look quite different. Uh, Excusing, please? Oh, hello, Mr. Shimako. Where have you been hiding? Mr. Stevens, can you abridge with information concerning correct method for operating? Just buy this ashore? Uh, oh, yes, excellent salesman. See, instrument foolproof. But I having strong doubt. It's all very simple. Here, I'll show you. Uh, please. 
Pardon me. Oh! Oh, please forgive me, Captain. I just picked up a few mementos of Hawaii, you see. Ouch! I beg your pardon, Mary. Hey, be For, careful. Please. Oh! Oh! oh. Henry! Oh. Do something! Well, really, I assure you that it's a ghastly mistake. Put that stuff away before it hurts. Oh. Trusting you not injured? Uh, not seriously, I hope. I say, Mr. Moto, how marvelous to meet you again like this. Uh, you're very impetuous, Mr. Featherstone. Mr. Moto, whatever happened after you solved that case in London? Nothing much. Oh, I say, what's up? Have I dropped a brick or something? Uh, please do not concern yourself. Well, oh, look here. If you're traveling incognito or anything, I won't tell a soul. Well, you are most accommodating. <sighs> May I be permitted to introduce my friend, Mr. Featherstone, Miss Kirk, Mr. Howard Stevens? How do you do? Howard Stevens? I've been reading all about you, all this about Salome's tomb. Wonderful, wonderful. You and Mr. Shimako seem to be old friends. Oh, yes, rather. I've known Mr. Sh 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 Shimono for years. Oh, I say, I'm frightfully sorry I did let the cat out of the bag, didn't I? Uh, yes, even the poor animal's tail. <laughs> <laughs> but why are you hiding your light, Mr. Moto? You're not on a case now, by any chance. No, I've gone and made a lot of trouble for you. What a frightful fool I've been. Oh, don't worry. We won't tell anyone, will we? I assure you, the matter is of no consequence. I'm on vacation, and my humble incognito was merely to avoid any possibility of business intruding itself. I wonder if they charge extra for love. You ought to know. Message for you, Joe, from Wendling. I'm afraid it's bad news. Yeah, let's see it. Arriving Friday on Lure Line. Tell Joe his friend Moto, also aboard. Mr. Moto, huh? It's very bad. Why is he on that ship if it's not to guard the crown? So what? You think a little Japanese dick's gonna scare me? Moto's very dangerous. Very. Everyone who does business with me tells me that. What you worrying about? I'm doing the job. All you got to do is cut down the rocks. And this time you give me 30%. No, I'll have nothing to do with this affair. Nothing. Scared of the mighty Moto, huh? Yes, I am. As long as he's connected with this, I'm not interested. What if I was to rub Mr. Moto out? That would be a different story. You keep a secret. It will be my earnest endeavor to respect your confidence. As you know, I happen to have uh, certain links in Scotland Yard. And my uncle, remember? Oh, yes, Sir Hector. How is he? Splendid. He's assistant commissioner, you know. Would you gentlemen care for something to drink? I wish you'd go. Oh, I beg your pardon. Uh, Mr. Moto? A glass of milk, if you please. Uh, yes, sir. And you, sir? I'll take a uh, lime juice and soda. Uh, do you think you should, sir? Remember your driving. Well, Uncle Hector told me. You see, what did that fellow mean by that? Uh, please continue. Have you ever heard of a super criminal called Metaxa? Metaxa? But well, the name does seem to strike a chord of memory. Well, he's on the record as being dead. But Uncle Hector thinks he's still alive, lying low in America. Oh, so? Now, I've had a brilliant idea. No. To find Metaxa and get a candid portrait of him. Think of it, the only picture in existence of the world's most famous criminal. Who are you talking about? Oh, uh, nothing. Just a bunch of rubbish. Uh, what about a drink? Oh, thank you. Do you know you look exactly like the Queen of Sheba? Oh, oh thank you. Honestly, though, she should have that crown on. <laughs> That's what she thought, but we've got to be very careful. Naturally, naturally. Well, what you people ought to do is to get Mr. Moto to look after things for you. Oh, no. Please remember the time on vacation. In fact, I feel like each one of the three monkeys. I mean, if men like Metaxa are loose in America, Oh, I said it's awfully good about the monkeys. Hear no evil, see no evil, and all that. Oh, priceless. Did you say Metaxa was in America? Say, I'm frightfully sorry I did let the cat out of the bag again, didn't I? 
Well, that's what Scotland Yard thinks. Mum's the word. Oh. Your Majesty and gentlemen, I give you the Crown of Sheba and its safe arrival at the San Francisco Museum. Fremont Museum. This is the curator's secretary speaking. I'm sorry, but an interview now is quite impossible. Professor Hildebrand's leaving for the docks in a few minutes. Perhaps tomorrow. Professor Hildebrand, it's 11.20. Susan, look here a minute. I'm sorry, but we have to go. These are all pretty snappy, aren't they? Don't you realize we have to start? Uh-huh. Anxious to see the romantic Mr. Stevens again? I don't understand you. The most exciting day in the history of the museum, and you sit here choosing neckties. Haven't you forgotten that Hendrik Manderson is calling for us? He's late, as usual. We should take your car now. No, oh, I think we'll give him a little more time. Hildebrand, what's the matter with you? What are you doing? I've been sitting outside in the car waiting for hours. My dear Manderson, we've been waiting for you. Yeah. Morning, girl. Good morning, Mr. Manderson. Perhaps you can make him hurry. No, he's impossible. Forever trying to be a young man again. Just look at that. Just look at that. Ah, don't be such an old ranter. There's no harm in a man trying to look his best. Won't make any difference in your case. Come on, girl. Come on. The boat's due now. Never mind. Never mind. I can walk along. How about a little news of the press? How about it? Well, you autographed it. Professor Hildebrand, are you alarmed by the superstition alleged to be connected with the crown? Certainly not, and that's Hildebrand. Oh, oh, oh. sorry. Uh, Mr. Hildebrand. Howard, it's wonderful to see you. Susan, how are you? Introduce me, please, Howard. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, Susan, this is Miss Eleanor Kirk, a fellow passenger of ours. This is Miss French. She's really the mainstay of the museum. How nice. That armored truck over there is about to transport our treasure to a specially constructed vault in the museum. I say, this is all frightfully exciting, isn't it? Oh, that chap with the weapon looks as if he means business. I say, can't you wait and say goodbye to Stevens and the others? I'm afraid not. One must not start a holiday by being late. Goodbye. I do wish you didn't have to run off like this. Uh, oh, Mr. Mungo, wait a minute. You forgot to give me your address. I do not yet know it myself. Oh, but look here, how am I going to get in touch with you? I shall call you at your hotel. Huh? Don't forget now. Do you mean? Follow that cat, quick. You're all loaded, boys. Pull her away. Howard, you haven't forgotten your promise to me, have you, that I'm your personal guest to the great unveiling? Of course not. I haven't forgotten. Goodbye. Come on, I want to go to the museum and see all that stuff unloaded. Well, everybody, how about a little cheer over a local tavern? A spot, you know, on me, of course. Well, it's about so time. <laughs> The tablet driver stole that truck. What? They're not real officers, they're phonies. I say, let's catch those blighters. I'm from Scotland Yard. Huh? I'm a detective. Oh. Wait a minute. Hold that car. Get after that armored truck. It's headed for the apartment. Go on. Snappy. Everything okay? Okay so far. You guys get moving. Where did you learn how to drive? Why didn't you put on the brakes? 
I ain't got none. Shut up and back that jalopy out of there. Can't back, neither. Look here, my good man. You keep a civil tongue in your head. <laughs> no wonder you chaps have so many accidents. You all drive on the wrong side of the road. No, a smart man. Never mind, Joe. Let's get going. I've seen that one chap's face somewhere before, but I... By Joe! He was the guard in the armored car! Follow him! Yeah. They went in there. They look mighty mean. I'll stay here and reconnoiter. Don't get high done. You go and fetch the bobbies. Yeah, I'll get foley's too. and get the car out of here. Right where will you be? I'll get in touch with you later. Hurry up. Come on out of there and keep your hands up. Hello. Oh, so it's you. Yes, it's me. Who are you spying on? Me? Spying? I... Oh, no, I, I'm just an innocent bystander. Just standing by. There you go, man! Look out! Is you all right, Paul? I think so. Well, we got two of them anyway. Here it is, Sergeant. Nice work, man. Well, you and your friend did a pretty good job. We saved the crown and only one man got away. Look here, Inspector. That man was a ringleader and I got a jolly good look at him. Oh, you did, eh? Could you identify him? Rather, I'd know him anywhere. Declared Mr. Featherstone stoutly. Confident that the daring young Englishman will identify the ringleader, police are conducting a widespread search for the missing gangster. Ah, shut up. This is worse than I thought. You can't stay here. It's too dangerous. Keep your pants on. The Frisco cops don't know me. And this slimy ain't gonna put his finger on me neither. We'll take care of that smart guy the same way we done with Mr. Moto. Sit down. Oh, it's you. You've been long enough. What happened? Well, I got here as soon as I could. The whole police force is out tonight looking for you. Never mind that. Did you follow my orders? Well, don't get sore, Joe. I tailed Moto from the pier, but before I could get him, he drove up to the city hall. Yeah, and? I went out to lunch with the chief of police. So Moto's still alive? Well, it's not my fault. By that time, the news came out about Joe's running with the cops. I was lucky not to get picked up. I told you I didn't want anything to do with this unless Moto was eliminated. Now, both of you leave here, at once. Wait a minute, Chisler. I'm going to do just what I said I'd do. And I'm going to get the crown, too, see? Then you better make your plans. Because at the moment, it's very unwise for you to remain here. I'll be downstairs, closing the shop. See me before you leave. Now, listen. I ain't leaving here. You call Tony and Nick. We've got to get that limey and moto. And no more mistakes, see? Please take you. Black sun? Me too, please. Oh, excuse me. Thank you. Gentlemen wishing try even rationets, please? No, thanks. Me no wanting. Why, it's Mr. Moto. I, I mean, Mr. Sh 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 Marco. Shimarco. You see, I haven't forgotten your alias. <laughs> Feathers to never forget. <laughs> Try one? Oh, thanks. 
I rather expected to find you here. You did? Oh, yes. Every tourist first visits Chinatown. I say, what an extraordinary day. Did you happen to read about my adventure? Yes, indeed. Which is my reason for wanting to find you. Well, that's funny, because I've been looking for you. There, see for yourself. Not here. We'll never get a chance like this again. No, you fool. Put that away. I fear that you have exposed yourself to extreme danger. Really? How? But the man you have promised to identify will certainly desire your removal. But if you really wish to be a successful detective, there's one golden rule which you must follow. Oh, is there really? Tell me. Never become a fatality. Oh, Mr. Moto. <laughs> They're shooting at us with a silencer. Get back! Somebody just ran out. That shot came from the inside. No, from the opposite direction. Observe. Come on. Let's catch him! He's climbing up! He's running along the ledge! It's too late, my friend. But your Uncle Hector was right. Metaxa is in America. Do you believe that was Metaxa? Undoubtedly. Such phenomenal agility carries conviction. Do you think the ruffian who tried to steal the crown at the pier was Metaxa? Definitely no. The methods are far too different. I say, they'll have to be awfully careful who they let in the museum tomorrow. Adams, pass in, please. Borodov. Borodov? Correct. I assure you, my invitation is in order. Just a minute, please. Oh, yes, Borodov, pass in. Thank you. Press. Just a minute. Admission card, please. Oh, now, look, pal. My job's to dream up some art on this crown dinger, see? And I gotta get yes, it. Yes, and my job's to see that no one gets in here without a special pass and no cameras. Well, you can't do this. Not to the record bulletin. Oh. Next, please. Dr. Pascal of Denver. Dr. Pascal. Oh, yes, doctor. Pass him, please. Williams? Oh, such a crown, quite uh, exclusive, don't you think? Oh. Oh, I am so sorry. My clumsiness was inexcusable. Oh, it was my fault, really, as long as the mirror's not broken. I've decided. Tonight. Oh, it's all right. No bad luck. <laughs> I am indeed relieved, madame. Yes. I was afraid I was late, Howard. You're not cross with me, are you? Why, uh, uh... Hadn't I better remind Professor Hildebrand that it's getting late? Hmm? Yeah, I guess, darling, yes. And tell him you ought to be more careful with those invitations. Oh, I'm so happy for you, Howard, and so excited. I, I can't congratulate you here. I'll wait till dinner time. Oh, really, I... Oh, I, no, I, I don't think that I... You're not going to spoil the lovely party I've arranged for you. Ladies and gentlemen, before I admit you to the home that we have built for our priceless treasure, I should like to pay tribute to the two men who, upon this unique occasion, deserve the major credit. Mr. Howard Stevens and Mr. Hendrik Manderson. Uh, Mr. Stevens, as you all know, was a leader of our expedition. Excuse me a moment, I forgot something. While Mr. Manderson, noted for his philanthropic activities, generously gave the final donation that enabled us to properly finance our expedition. And now, as curator of this museum, I shall... Uh, unlock the gates, thereby demonstrating the elaborate precautions we have taken to safeguard our incomparable relic from any further felonious attempts. May I point out that this vault is protected by invisible light beams, which, when broken, cause a series of alarms to be sounded. Oh, I say, that's a jolly good idea. All the mechanical devices which science has been able to conceive are incorporated in this impregnable chamber. You may be assured that the crown of Balkis, Queen of Sheba, will rest here in serene dignity.
forever. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you see this key. Now suppose for a moment that I were a thief. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that I were fortunate enough to possess this key. Now, I approach the gates. I insert the key in the lock. At this moment, may I suggest that the ladies place their delicately gloved hands over their shell-like ears? I can assure you that the din that will ensue will be, as the youngsters say, <laughs> simply terrific. <laughs> All right. Everybody ready? Now then, hold tight. Hmm. Something must have... Oh, well, we'll see what happens when I open the gates. Someone must have pulled the switch. Well, of course, uh, the electrical current must be off. Uh, some minor fault, you know, it's only, only just been installed. Uh, well, perhaps it's just as well. We can all now enter the crown chamber without alarm. Ladies and gentlemen, behold the crown of Sheba's queen. I will now leave you to admire our treasure at your leisure. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Infernal lot of puppycock. Madison. What's the matter? I worried about an alarm. I said to switch myself. Come on to my office. Uh, wait a minute. Watch the crown carefully. Mr. Moto. Susan, just a moment, please. Mr. Moto, will you come with us to the curator's office, please? I should be honored. You too, girl. Come along. Have you made certain of Stevens? Don't worry, I will. What are you doing here, Wong? Wait for Mr. Manderson with overcoat. Yeah, that's right, that's right. I sent him for it. It's going to rain. You can feel it in my leg. Been here long? Ten minutes, maybe. Anyone been in? No, sir. Not see anyone. Oh, all right. Let's go in. I'll stay here, Professor Hildebrand. This is most disconcerting. Unless there's some mechanical fault, somebody has got in here and tampered with that switch. Uh, Mr. Manderson, this man, Wong, he's your servant? Yeah. Been with me for many years. Mm. And listen, Mr. Motor, I'll tell you something. The world would be a much better place to live in if there were more people like Wong around. Oh, so. Now we've got to find out. Come, gentlemen, I'll show you the hiding place. Oh, must I get up again? Quite ingenious, what? <laughs> My own idea. <laughs> there, you see? Somebody has disconnected it. I should not make the contact now, Professor. Remember? The shell-like ears? Oh, of course, how foolish of me. We must have rid of those visitors, but who on earth could have possibly done this? If you hadn't smeared your paws all over that handle, Mr. Motor here might have got some fingerprints. Oh, dear, what a great big zany I am. That's right. How dare you? May I ask how many persons besides ourselves know the location of this switch? Only Mr. Howard Stevens and the men who uh, installed it, of course. And Mr. Stevens has been associated with the museum for a long time. No. As a matter of fact, he's only been connected with us since the expedition was first organized. Ah, uh, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Hildebrandt. Stevens has an excellent record. Excellent, Mr. Moto. That's why Professor Cornwall hired him. And I told you 50... <laughs> I told you 50 times I was a confounded raft in this room. But didn't you engage Mr. Stevens, Professor? I was only appointed curator when Professor Cornwall was taken from us. Rest his soul. I see. The young lady, your secretary, does she know where the alarm is concealed? No. No, no. Uh, Miss, Miss French could have known, but she herself expressed the wish that the knowledge should be strictly confined. Miss French. Yes? That Japanese gentleman in there, is he not the famous detective, Mr. Moto? That's right. Could you tell me where he is living? I'm afraid you'll have to ask him that, Wong. Oh, almost closing time. I'm leaving now, Howard. But don't you dare disappoint me. Mark Hopkins, 7 o'clock, huh? All right, I'll drop in for a little while. You're a darling. 
See you at seven. It's closing time, sir. Well, I'll see to it right away, O'Hara. Yes, sir. Frightfully fascinating. What? I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but we'll have to ask you to leave in a few more minutes. It's difficult to tear oneself away. I know exactly what you mean, sir. Especially as I have a sort of proprietary interest in it myself, if you know what I mean. Why, goodness me, you must be the young Englishman who saved the crown. Oh, they made a ridiculous lot of fuss about it. It wasn't anything at all, really. <laughs> You're too modest. Oh, no. Permit me to congratulate you. Oh, thank uh, I hope my shot of the crown turns out well. I'm told they don't allow photographs. They don't. But, uh, but look. Rather clever. What? I'm going to shoot it now. I got it. What's going on here? Yeah, they say you jolly well leave me alone. My orders are no pictures. And uh, now out you go. No, look, you can't do this to me. Look at Oh, so that's how it is, huh? Hey, what's the trouble this here? This man took a snapshot in the crown. He ruined my emulsion. And don't forget, O'Hara, if it hadn't been for Mr. Featherstone, there wouldn't be any ground to photograph. That's right. By Jove, I never thought of that. Oh, I'm so mortified. How could I have been so clumsy? Oh, my camera! Oh, it's too bad about your camera, Featherstone, but we can't make any exceptions. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I shall have to ask you to leave. Well... Just a moment. I shall, of course, replace your camera. I'm afraid you can't. You see, it's a very exclusive type. I have a friend. He deals in special photographic equipment. If he hasn't one in stock, I'm quite sure he'll be able to procure one quickly. Well, do you think he can? I do hope so. I must have a camera tomorrow. His shop's open evenings. It's in Chinatown, out of the high rent zones. I may possibly have his car. Yes, here's the address. Meet you there tonight. Good day. But I'm only going to stay at the party a few minutes. Come on, couldn't we have dinner together? Hildebrand asked me to work tonight. Well, I'll come by here then and take you out when you're through. Oh, please don't worry about me. After all, the party's being given in your honor, isn't it? Oh, but Susan. Yes? I have an engagement with Professor Hildebrand. I think he might wish to see me in the present circumstances. I'll tell Professor Hildebrand you're here. Thank you. And you know, of course, Mr. Moto. <laughs> I did not anticipate this pleasure, Mr. Moto. I am, in a modest way, a member of your profession. So the professor has informed me. Mr. Barloff, a very distressing incident has just occurred. Nothing serious, I hope. Uh, excuse me, please. May I be permitted to ask Mr. Stevens a question which seems pertinent? Why, of course. Did you by any chance disconnect the alarm switch before the ceremony? Well, certainly I did. I thought it might scare the pants off the visitors. What? Well, why didn't you tell me? Well, I'm sorry, but how was I to know you wanted to demonstrate the thing? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I assure you, the dinner will be simply terrific. I was just waiting for Mr. Moto, and I just came back to have one last look. Oh, outrageous! Da 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 da, da da da, da 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 da. Cigarettes, Mr. Moto. Thank you. Thank you very much. I've got a favor to ask you, Mr. Moto. Yes? Do you mind if I talk to you for a moment in private? Please come in. What may I do for you, Benny? Well, I've heard a lot about you, Mr. Moto. I mean, the way you can clean up on guys twice your size, and I was wondering... Well, the truth of it is, there's a big palooka who works here in the hotel who's always picking on me and shoving me around. Oh, I see. And uh, you would like to teach him a lesson, perhaps? Oh, I sure would. They tell me this 
jujitsu fixes it so a little fella has a chance with a big bruiser. Sometimes, if one catches one's adversary off guard. Would you show me how, please? Right now? Right now? Yeah. Well, one simple throw. Now, suppose you are that big bully. Now, step right over there. Here? Yes, uh, start attacking me, swinging viciously. Come on, Benny, be vicious. Gee, do you mean I could do that to Butch? Undoubtedly, uh, with the proper leverage. Excuse me, Benny? Yes, speaking. Who is this? This is Wong, Mr. Manderson's servant. I met you in the museum this afternoon. Uh, yes, Wong. What is it? Can you not tell me now if it is so terribly urgent? Not over telephone. I must see you tonight. It concerns the case you're working on. Very well, and where shall I meet you? At the Laughing Buddha restaurant. The Laughing Buddha restaurant. I shall be there as soon as possible. Excuse me, I have to leave at once. You going out to detect something? I hope so. Boy, I'd sure like to help you sometime. Perhaps. Sometime? Say, sport, beat it downstairs and clean out the spadoons. Do it yourself. What did you say? I don't suppose you heard me. Very promising start. Thanks for the lesson. I'll be back tomorrow for another one. I beg your pardon. Motor You wish to order, sir? Yes, later. I beg your pardon, sir, but I've been attacked and robbed by ruffians who have relieved me of my wallet. It's very embarrassing, but I need a little car fare to get to my residence. Certainly. Where do you live? In Liverpool. Oh, so? This will assist you to begin your journey. I thank you, sir, and you will get your reward in heaven. Leggy Booth, please. I'm expecting to meet a friend here, uh, Mr. Wong. Mr. Wong? Oh, yeah. Come this way, please. I regret that I'm unplugged. You got your yeah, message up. Wait, don't try to find me. What happened? Mr. Wong is quite dead. You kill him? No, he was killed from in there. Step aside. <laughs> Who was in here? A man, a, a white man. He came in right after Mr. Wong. What did he look like, please? I couldn't tell. He kept his hat on and his coat collar up. He had the strangest eyes. Oh, so? Good eyes, are you? Light you, huh? You 
will get your reward in heaven. I say, could you tell me? Why, it's Mr. No, Mr. Shimako. <laughs> Funny how we keep bumping into each other. Mr. Featherstone, you are ubiquitous. Am I really? Well, I'm looking for 240 Grand Avenue, but I don't seem to be able to find it. Probably because this is Sacramento Street. Sacramento Street? Oh, 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 fireworks. Well, this weather does make everything seem a bit sinister, but I wonder if you would help me find the place? Certainly. Now listen, Joe, I tell you he's trying to double-cross us. If he isn't, then why did he go to the museum this afternoon when he had told us he's going to Oakland on business? Oh, he did that, did he? Yeah. I followed him. I've had a hunch all along he was just using us to do the dirty work. Go tell Mr. Perez I want to see him. Now? Yeah, now. What's the use of putting things off? Say I've got something very important to say to him. Okay. What is it? Joe's got something to tell you. Says it's important. Later, later. The young Englishman may be here at any minute. Well, I'll let him in. I wouldn't keep Joe waiting too long. You know how nervous he gets. You, uh, you have a message for me? Sure. Well, what is it? We can't waste time like this. How would you like the museum this afternoon? I was going to tell you about that, Joe. I made a detailed plan of the crown room. Should prove very helpful to us. Hand it over. I said, hand it over. You're making a mistake, Joe. I arranged with the Englishman to come here tonight. As soon as he's out of the way, then you can proceed. Give me the map. You'll find it's complete, even to the location of the light beams. Thanks. Crazy? Try to double cross me, will you? No, no. I wouldn't do that, Joe. Don't, Joe. Don't. Don't. Don't, Joe. I guess you had to learn sometime. You brought I said, you realize where we are? What an amazing coincidence. Perhaps contrary would be a more suitable word. Would it? Why? I will ask you a question. Who directed you to this place? A nice old gentleman I met in the museum. He broke my camera. We made an appointment to replace it. Oh, sir? He's outside now, and Moto's with him. Yeah? Do you understand that you are the only person who can identify that gangster who stole the armored car? Yes. <gasps> this is undoubtedly the rendezvous. What? Taxi. The Freeman Museum, please, quickly. Get the car. I don't think there's anybody here. What do you want? I'm Mr. Moto of the International Police. We wish to come in. My business is urgent. Oh, yes, I remember you. You were here this afternoon. That's correct. So were you. Come in. Bad night. I suppose you want to see the curator. Professor Hildenbrand is here. Oh, yes, he just came in. He'll be glad to see you, all right. He's got the jitters about that crown. May I suggest that you notify the police to have the museum watched? I suspect there will be an attempt to steal the crown tonight. Yes, sir, I will, sir. Just as soon as I show you to the curator's office. Thank you, I know the way.
What is it? Footprints, by Jove. You're very perceptive, Mr. Featherstone. I see Mr. Mojo. Do you really wish to be of assistance? You bet your boots I do. And come with me over there. Station yourself right here. I could trust no one else. Remain silent and inconspicuous and watch. Stay here, don't show myself, and watch. That's correct. Mr. Moto, yes. if, if, if I do see anything, what shall I do? Inform me immediately. I shall be in the curator's office. I may enter. Mr. Moto, what are you doing here? I wish to see Professor Hildebrand, please. He's playing chess with Mr. Manderson. Oh, so? I'll tell him you're here. Please. Right this way, please. <coughs> I didn't expect you to move that night, did you? <coughs> Infantile play. Good evening. Well, this is a surprise, Mr. Moto. Oh. Uh, we are kind of uh, keeping vigil, as you might say. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Uh, <coughs> Your move. Oh, leave me alone. I can't play chess with these constant interruptions. <laughs> Forgive the intrusion, gentlemen, but I have some sad news. <clears throat> Whatever do you mean? The news is from Mr. Manderson. I regret to inform you that your servant, Wong, is dead. What? What are you talking about? He was killed uh, less than an hour ago. Do you mean murdered? Yes, he was stabbed with a desk knife. What? I can't believe it, Mr. Moto. How did it happen? Poor faithful Wong. Have the police been notified, Mr. Moto? I, I must call them at once. I understand that my news is a shock, Mr. Man. Yeah. But how did you find it out, Mr. Moto? Hello, operator, how, how did you find it out? Where did it happen? Hello, opera, up. Oh, what is the matter with this infernal thing? Hello. Someone deprived this instrument of all utility. I don't understand any of this. If, Mr. Moto, as you say, you're out to catch this uh, legendary Metaxa person, you're no more on a holiday than I am. Perhaps I have the busman's conception of a holiday. Oh, it's preposterous. The scoundrel's been dead for years. Please accept my assurance that Metaxa is uh, abundantly alive, conducting his existence right here in San Francisco. I don't believe it. Uh, do you really think he'll try to steal the crown? Assuredly. A man with Metaxas psychosis will be unable to resist the impulse. It must have been he who got the telephone wires. Good heavens. He might be here now in the museum. Why don't you call the police? Oh, no. I've journeyed a long way to find Metax, and I do not wish to give him cause for alarm. Alarm? By Jupiter. I've forgotten all about the alarm system. Gentlemen, we have no real problem. The beam system, then, is in working order? You may bet your shirt on that, Mr. Moto. I said it myself before dinner. Mm, you're certain this time? Of course I am. I don't make a mistake twice, Manderson. But to satisfy you, I'll show you. <laughs> there. <clears throat> hmm? It's ruined. Completely ruined. Yep. Someone did a thorough job of it. Oh, now we must tell the police. <clears throat> Hello. Hello, give me that, please. please. Uh, give me... Uh, what? what? Oh! Uh, come with me, I'll notify the guard. Come oh, quickly. There's a man lying on the floor out there. I think he's dead. What? Where? Here. Why, it's Mr. Featherstone. Yes, he came in with me. Uh, well, is he alive? Indeed, yes. Purely a temporary concussion. Uh, Susan, did you see anything? 
Why, I heard a noise, looked out, and saw him lying here. Then I distinctly heard someone running away. And from what direction did that sound proceed? Right from the doorway there. Oh, so? I'll get my first aid kit. Mr. Stevens, may I ask what you are doing here? I might ask you the same question. I just came by to pick up Miss Fringe. What's happened? Oh, this is all a lot of tomfoolery. Can't you call a doctor for that boy? There's nothing the matter with Mr. Featherstone that an aspirin cannot cure. Mr. Stevens, would you be of material assistance by carrying him into the office? <coughs> Who's trapped you, my friend? Metax. <coughs> what? Metax is in America. One golden rule to follow never. <coughs> Hildebrand. Hildebrand, what are you standing there for? What are you waiting for? Why don't you call the watchman? Yes. I think it would be more desirable were we to ask Mr. Stevens to come into the inner office for a little chat. Me? Am I right in assuming that you think I saw Featherstone? Step inside, please. Yes. yes. Be so kind as to tell me when he recovers. Congratulations, Miss French, and Mr. Stevens. Well, it, it, it's Molodov. Well, what does this mean? Is he Metaxa? He tried to find out where the alarm switch was. Uh-huh. You're Bolshevik. Borodov is a criminal, but not of Metaxa standard. He and his partner are well known to the French and English police, and uh, until a few months ago, they operated in Shanghai. His accomplice is known to all of you as Miss Eleanor Kerr. I, I, don't, I don't know what it all means. Now, if this man isn't Metaxa and Stevens... But there are many other criminals, Professor, who covered those jewels. For instance, that gangster Joe Rubler and his associates. Well, any fool could see that, Mr. Moto. But what about Metaxa? Yes, Mr. Moto. Now, have you changed your opinion, or do you still believe that, that Metaxa will come here tonight? He's here now, Professor. In this room. What? What on earth do you mean? You see, last night, Wong chanced to discover Metaxa's identity. He arranged a meeting with me in order to collect a reward uh, without endangering himself. But uh, Metaxa guessed his intention and uh, stabbed him before I reached the rendezvous. Fortunately, however, before he died, he was able to reveal Metaxa's alias, Professor Hildebrand. Will you be so kind as to accompany me to police headquarters? Oh, yes, yes. What? Well, this is outrageous. I had nothing to do with this, nothing. I refuse to go with you. Uh, oh, so? In that case, I fear we must use persuasion. Mr. Stevens, uh, please guard Professor Hildebrand and Monsieur Borodov until I arrange for an official arrest. And do not hesitate to use this if necessary. Oh, how dare you? 
I'm Roger Chauncey Hildebrand. You all know me. This accusation's monstrous. Gentlemen, uh, the case is closed. Mr. Moto, congratulations. I shall see you all later at headquarters. I believe he's Batak, sir. Uh, I say, sir, would you pose for a candid portrait exclusively tomorrow? Certainly not. Hildebrand, if you're really the scoundrel who killed Wong, I... Excuse me, I want to call a cab and make arrangements for Wong's funeral. that I must ask you to put down your weapon. I trust you will not be so foolhardy as to attempt escape. Escape? From you? My dear Moto, I know your reputation far too well. You may drop your characterization now, Mr. Metaxa. Oh, yes. Uh, may I have the crown, if you please? You are very clever, Mr. Moto. I flattered myself that I had completely hidden my identity, but I see that my sense of security was false. Uh, please remain where you are. It would be most distasteful to me, should I be obliged to shoot you. Excellent makeup, Mr. Metaxa. Thank you. Uh, perhaps you would be so kind as to remove it, so that I might acquaint myself with your true appearance? Certainly, Mr. Moto. It will be a relief to be rid of it. I understand. My particular aversion is beards. They itch. There. And now, Mr. Motor, would you have the courtesy of explaining to me just how you came to suspect me? Uh, clearly. Your trusted servant, Wong, appeared to have some secret from you. Yes. The daring manner in which you killed him was characteristic of Metaxa. So you invented that story of Wong's death speech? Oh, yes. He was quite dead when I found him. Your generous contribution to the funds of the expedition was a shrewd investment. Also, I have great admiration for your infinite patience, but you made one simple mistake, Mr. Metaxa. How so? When you returned here tonight, your wet shoes left their mark on the museum floor. What is so unusual about that? Nothing, except that the footprints were the firm strides of a healthy man until they reached the curator's office, where they suddenly and most conveniently developed a decided limp. You are most ingenious, Mr. Moto. It was stupid of me not to have seen through your false accusation of Hildebrand. Oh, here, watch this man. Watch 
And now, Mr. Metaxa, if you have no more tricks to play, perhaps you will capitulate? You need any help, Mr. Morrow? Thank you, not now. But you may see that Professor Hildebrand is released. What's this, another one, Mr. Morrow? Yes, Sergeant. This is the real Metaxa. Show him special attention, please. You will find a Mr. Borodov and the guard in the museum. He'll make a force should they wish to play bridge. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Stevens, may I suggest that you place the crown in safe hands until the alarm system is repaired? Don't worry, Mr. Moto. I'll take care of it. Oh! I'm awfully sorry I dropped it, Mr. Moto. Oh, well, perhaps I was not meant to have a vacation. <laughs>